The universe has fascinated the human beings for generations. It consists of stars, galaxies, galaxy clusters, planets, gas, dust, comets and many other components. It also consists of what we call the dark matter. Stars are self-illuminating objects. This is because they generate energy. At the core of a star, the energy production happens by a process called nuclear fusion. The most familiar star to us is the sun. When we look at the night sky, we see a large number of other stars too. Though they appear like very small point objects to us, the stars are spherical in shape and have definite size and mass. The point-like appearance is because of the huge distances of these stars from us. Like humans, the stars have a life cycle too. They are born, they pass through different ages and then die. They are born in the giant molecular clouds in the interstellar medium. These clouds that consist of gas and dust are known as the nebulae. The dominant gases are hydrogen and helium. The dust and gases in a nebula are spread out, but gravity slowly begins to pull together the clumps of dust and gas. As these clumps get bigger and bigger, their gravity gets stronger and stronger. Eventually, the clump of dust and gas gets so big that it collapses under its own gravity. The collapse causes the material at the center of the cloud to heat up and this hot core is the beginning of a star which is known as the protostar. The hot core gathers dust and gas. However, all of this material need not become a part of the star later. The remaining dust can form planets, asteroids or comets or may remain as dust. Depending on the mass of the protostar, the collapsing gas and dust burns hotter, eventually reaching temperatures sufficient to fuse hydrogen into helium. Fusion produces an outward pressure that balances with the inward pressure caused by gravity stabilizing the star. Then the contraction ceases and the star turns on and becomes a main sequence star powered by hydrogen fusion. For a star the size of our sun and smaller, the nuclear fusion proceeds via proton-proton chain where the two hydrogen atoms are first merged together into a deuterium atom which can then be merged with another hydrogen atom to form helium-3. Then two of the helium-3 nuclei can be merged together to form a helium-4 atom. This whole reaction releases a large amount of energy in the form of gamma rays. In stars with a higher mass, the dominant energy production process is the CNO cycle, the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle, which uses the nuclei of carbon, nitrogen and oxygen atoms as intermediaries and produces a helium nucleus in the end as with a proton-proton chain. The remaining part of the life cycle depends on the mass of the stars. When a star has fused all the hydrogen in its core, nuclear reactions halt. In the absence of energy production, the core begins to collapse into itself and becomes much hotter. Hydrogen is still available outside the core, so hydrogen fusion continues in a shell surrounding the core. The increasingly hot core also pushes the outer layers of the star outward, causing them to expand and cool 
transforming the star into a red giant. These red giants can grow to more than 400 times the size of the original star. If the star is sufficiently massive, the collapsing core can become hot enough to support nuclear fusion using helium, where helium atoms fuse to produce heavier elements and energy. As the helium quickly runs out, the core shrinks again and this time the helium starts to burn in a shell around the core and hydrogen may start burning in a shell around that. The outer layers of the star start becoming cool and then turn red again as it enters its second red giant phase. What happens next depends on the mass of the star. For average stars like the sun, the process of ejecting its outer layers continues until the stellar core is exposed. This dead hot stellar remains is called a white dwarf. White dwarfs, which are roughly the size of our earth, contains the mass of a star. The pressure from fast moving electrons keep these stars from collapsing. It is predicted that our own sun will be a white dwarf billions of years from now. The white dwarfs are intrinsically very faint because they are so small and lacking a source of energy production. They fade into oblivion as they gradually cool down. This fate awaits only for those stars with a mass up to about 1.44 times the mass of our sun. This limiting value is known as Chandrasekhar limit. After the Indian born astrophysicist who formulated it in 1930. Above that mass, electron pressure cannot support the core against further collapse. In more massive stars, after the helium is burnt, the cycle continues with a fusion of heavier elements such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. This can continue till the formation of iron. Having achieved iron, the star no longer can support its own mass and the iron core collapses. In just a matter of seconds, the core shrinks from roughly 5000 miles across to just a dozen and the temperature spikes 100 billion degrees or more. The outer layers of the star initially begin to collapse along with the core but rebound with the enormous release of energy and are thrown violently outward. This is called a supernova explosion. Supernovae release huge amount of energy. For a period of days to weeks, a supernova may outshine an entire galaxy. Likewise, all the naturally occurring elements and a rich array of subatomic particles are produced in these explosions. On an average, a supernova explosion occurs about once in every 100 years in a typical galaxy. About 25 to 50 supernovae are discovered each year in other galaxies, but most are too far away to be seen without a telescope. After the supernova explosion, if the core at the center of a supernova is between about 1.4 and 3 solar masses, the collapse continues until electrons and protons combine to form neutrons, producing a neutron star. Neutron stars are incredibly dense because it contains so much mass packed into such a small volume. The gravitation at the surface of a neutron star is immense. Neutron stars also have powerful magnetic fields which can accelerate atomic particles around its magnetic poles, producing powerful beams of radiation. Those beams sweep around like massive searchlight beams as the star rotates. If such a beam is oriented so that 
it periodically points toward the earth we observe it as regular pulses of radiation that occur whenever the magnetic pole sweeps past the line of sight in this case the neutron star is known as a pulsar if the collapsed stellar core is larger than 3 solar masses it collapses completely to form a black hole an infinitely dense object whose gravity is so strong that nothing can escape its immediate proximity not even light since photons are water instruments are designed to see black holes can only be detected indirectly indirect observations are possible because the gravitational field of a black hole is so powerful that any nearby material often the outer layers of a companion star is caught up and dragged in as matter spirals into a black hole it forms a disk that is heated to enormous temperatures emitting copious quantities of x rays and gamma rays that indicate the presence of the underlying hidden companion the shock waves produced by the supernova explosion can trigger the star formation in nearby regions galaxies are a big family of stars gas dust and dark matter held together by gravity as we know we belong to the solar system which is a part of the milky way galaxy milky way is a spiral galaxy and the solar system exists in one of the arms other than the milky way which is a parent galaxy the nearest galaxy is the andromeda galaxy our solar system has been formed from the cloud around the sun during its formation the solar system consists of eight planets mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune a number of dwarf planets like pluto eris cirrus makemake etc moons of the planets asteroids comets dust oort cloud etc with advent of modern telescopes we know that there are planetary systems around other stars in our galaxy such a system is known as exoplanetary system with several such new candidates being discovered the quest for a habitable planet and extraterrestrial life drives the human beings and the exploration continues <laughs>